Hey, Jazz, great to see you. Likewise, Joe. Nice to be here. I really appreciate you taking some time for me. Now, I want to rewind a little bit before we get to current events at the company. I think you joined Netrio back in uh, January of 2020. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So you're running the company as CEO. What originally attracted you to the business? Well, prior to Netrio, I was at PricewaterhouseCoopers, where I had started the Cloud Center of Excellence. And I had the opportunity to work with the world's leading technology companies to solve their strategic and operational needs. It was very clear to me that we were at the inflection point of technology where we mm. as consumers and business users have greater demand for real time information on anything and from anywhere. This means mm. that we need information on and from our IT systems, applications and devices. And we need to be able to know this information reliably from our network and internet in real time and to be able to analyze and act on this information in real time. However, this means that the sheer number of devices and services that a typical organization needs to monitor, the sheer amount of data generated, and the complexity of the computing paradigm to correlate these events will be far beyond what mere human beings can grasp. Mm -hmm. So we start to look at all the technology solutions out there and realize that there was really a need to figure out how we could wrap our arms around this and push the industry forward in a different direction into what we need as consumers and businesses to solve. Then I discovered Netrio. Uh, I was approached actually by a friend who runs a PE firm to head Netrio. And I realized that Netrio has been quietly solving these IT management and monitoring challenges since its inception some 20 years ago for some of the world's renowned organizations, but they never really talked about it. So mm -hmm. I realized that this was a rare opportunity to take this gem of a company into the world stage. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so did you mention, I think you mentioned cloud monitoring, a, mm -hmm. a booming market, no doubt. Mm -hmm. You've got all mm -hmm. these uh, partners and end customers out there who need this type of monitoring. But a few months after you joined, I think you acquired Cloud Monix. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I, first, first of all, did I pronounce that correctly? Is it Cloud Monix? You did. Yeah, Cloud okay, Monix. Okay. How did you guys discover Cloud Monix and, and why did you make the acquisition? So we actually just acquired Cloud Monix uh, a week or two ago. Um, okay. But uh, we had been talking to Cloud Monix since the start of the year. So it's about six months in, in the works, right? And the reason for that is because we've been thinking of growing rapidly and we've been doing that over the years organically. So we as a company have been building our company organically through all the different capabilities, but we wanted to accelerate this transformation more and we started to consider inorganic options. And so our, cloud, our discussions with Cloudmonix started to get more serious about six months ago when we were considering how we would be able to bring this technology into the fold. And Cloudmonix is actually fascinating because they have several thousand customers. Um, they're not just a strong Azure monitoring solution. So for example, they are a, a Microsoft Silver partner and they mm -hmm. have uh, capabilities around Azure monitoring with a strong integration to third party um, tools like uh, ServiceNow, PagerDuty and the like. So you sort of have that capability, not just in terms of the ingestion of data, but also the ability to act on some of that information, but very focused on Azure. They also do AWS capabilities and monitoring, but less so. So we found that it was very complementary to what we offer. Um, certainly there's some overlap, as you can imagine, because we mm -hmm. also already were doing um, and have been doing for a while Azure monitoring. So, but this actually kind of accelerates our growth in that direction, pulls together some actually some really cool technology um, and helps us engage that community a lot faster. And so we want to be able to do this because we feel, as I mentioned earlier, the challenges in the industry are really just sort of growing as we get more and more heterogeneous, as we start working from home a lot more, we start needing to monitor a lot of the Microsoft workloads, not just Azure, but also Microsoft 365. Um, so the ability to be able to grow with Microsoft through this evolution is something that we strategically would like to invest more in as well. Okay. Now, uh, thank you very much for a little bit of uh, background on, on the acquisition. Can you tell me a little bit more about each company's greatest strengths before the deal and then and how you're going to bring them together? 
So Netrio has always been strong in IT management and monitoring, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and that encompasses sort of what we call full stack monitoring. So that includes network, IT um, systems, as well as applications. Um, we've been doing cloud monitoring as well in terms of my, uh, Microsoft Azure, as well as AWS capabilities, and um, a lot of our core on the on-premises side of things. Cloud mm. Monix focuses primarily on Azure monitoring, not on on-premises side. So when it comes to our customers needing to explore and integrate more complex sort of Azure needs and to get that holistic view, we've been building in our roadmap different Azure capabilities. Um, and we've got lots of other things we want to do like AI operations and all that too. So mm. while focusing on our fo core, we thought we'd be able to augment some of the capabilities that CloudMonix has to, you know, to accelerate our overall roadmap and transformation. So that's on the cloud, that's on the Netrio side in terms of the benefit of this acquisition. For CloudMonix mm -hmm. customers, they have been primarily focused on cloud monitoring, right? Um, and primarily Azure, they started to introduce um, AWS capabilities quite recently in the past year or so. Um, but what they what we bring to the table now, you know, with the acquisition is that they now have access to broader monitoring capabilities that Natrio provides as well. Um, one of the other things that CloudMonix has that's really attractive is that they have a really strong try buy mechanism. In other words, they have a freemium mm -hmm. model as part of the Azure marketplace and as part of what they offer as a whole. And so they they have what we call a low touch model from a uh, customer self-discovery perspective, which is really attractive in terms of getting customers the ability to very quickly realize some of the ROI and try and uh, experiment with uh, the capabilities available. This is something that Netrio, because we've been such a robust solution, have not been developing much of a muscle around. So mm -hmm. it's not just the technology integration that we see potential in, but it's also the go-to-market capability in terms of the try-buy mechanism, the self-discovery, the self-service um, dynamic that we found very complementary. This opens us up to faster sales cycles, right? Where customers can discover and, and learn more about the technologies on both sides on their own um, and also serve and support themselves. What's interesting though, is that CloudMonix of course was a smaller organization and they were, you know, super guerrilla in terms of the way they were thinking of things, right? So in low mm. touch and all that. Whereas, as you know, CloudMonix has been a very boutique, high-end solution dealing with some major um, organizations around the world with high scalability, high reliability needs. So we're coming down basically mm. with uh, awesome service, right, for every one of our customers. And we're bringing that kind of service and support, right, for the CloudMonix team as well. So they never usually, never used to have customer success, whereas customer success has been a major tenant of our organization. And we're able to sort of bring that together um, to enable the CloudMonix MSP, CSPs to have a lot more um, services and support, right, for the needs that they have as a community. So they, it, essentially, if you think about it, CloudMonix has been really good at reaching out to lots of customers, but maybe not being able to give them a lot of the love and the nurture, whereas we've been very boutique about the customers we've been working with and giving them a lot of love and attention. But now we're bringing both of these companies together so that Netrio has the scale in terms of the outreach to customers, while CloudMonix has the scale and support, right? to support the large network of customers they have. So super complementary, not just from a technology perspective, but from a holistic end-to-end -end customer lifetime journey perspective. Got it, okay. Now, it, during uh, that explanation, you also mentioned the, the CSP and the MSP partner mm -hmm. opportunity here. W when I um, first heard about the deal, I, I did notice that you emphasized the MSP opportunity and the partner mm -hmm. opportunity. Can you tell me a little bit more? Has, were both companies focused on MSPs prior or was it more a CloudMonix and now you're gonna expand that? What, what's the journey here for the MSPs? That's an interesting thing, yes, because uh, Netrio actually started as an MSP so we've always had that perspective of scale and support, right, for organizations. Because when you think about MSPs, it's a question of scale. Like, um, what are you actually managing across the different scenarios, whether it's multi-tenant in a large, super large organization across multiple divisions that they have, or 
um, an organization that's managing I, other parties, uh, you know, systems and services, right? So um, we've always had that mindset of being able to manage the services and, and systems that, you know, other companies have and be able to provide that leverage um, for them uh, with the expertise that we bring to the table. Um, Cloud Monix has been doing that as well, however, at a smaller scale. And so yeah. what we want to be able to do is to provide that scale and support for some of these MSPs to give them broader capabilities uh, in terms of the number of devices they can manage, the number of paradigms they have, so they don't have to be using another tool right now if they want to manage the environment. So MSPs, of course, deal with a wide range of customers, and they, in the Cloud Monix world, have pretty much pigeonholed Cloud Monix in the Azure monitoring side of the house. But with our capabilities now at Netrio, they're able to have this cross uh, functional capability across multiple different platforms, right? Uh, for both cloud and on-premises solutions. So they don't have to have multiple um, solutions to manage their environment. That makes it a lot more efficient um, when they're trying to monitor their environments. And it also makes it a lot more affordable because they're leveraging one solution and they don't need to have a lot of varied expertise across the different solutions um, and have a more consolidated streamlined view um, when they are under when they are ma managing and monitoring their environment. So it's mm -hmm. it helps the the MSPs and the Cloud Monix as well have a more holistic view of all the different systems they have in place, not just in cloud, but also on prem. Mm. Do, do you think the MSPs will ultimately gain a uh, I'll use the term, sometimes it's overused, but but a single pane of glass to, for, for mm -hmm. all that on-prem, hybrid, and cloud, all those yes. various workloads and services, yeah? Absolutely. I was trying to avoid that term as well. Because <laughs> I know, we both so were. so <laughs> much abused in the industry, but it's truly the case. I mean, MSPs mm -hmm. need that overview of all the different capabilities they have, right? Across their multi-tenanted environments, across the different bespoke needs for each of their customers. And we want to be able to provide that single pane of glass in that sense. And we do that in the natural world. We do provide that. And beyond that single pane of glass, beyond the ability to observe, it's the also ability to analyze and act on that. Because the so what around the pain is, is critical, right? And we are able to provide the ability to analyze and act because we've got all that information. So what Cloud Monix customers now benefit from is, is not just that the information and the data they have from the history of maintaining the organization, but the 20 year history that Netrio actually has with respect to the date, with respect to the data patterns um, for all the different issues that customers may face. So we have better alert management and monitoring capabilities. We have better sort of analytical capabilities on what you should be doing in terms of predictive direction. So our AI ops capabilities are, you know, are much stronger in terms of the the repository of the information we have and the patterns that we understand from network management and operations that can now be applied with um, Cloud Monix as well. So we're stronger together because we now also inherit Cloud Monix's historical information. And we're able to understand these patterns of work to help MSPs not just manage it physically themselves with lots of human beings, but mm. also be able to drive that automation, right? and the analytical insights in order to improve and manage the environment better so they can go back to their customers and drive um, you know, the cost down essentially for their customers and pass that value on because we're now dealing with more efficient structures of management. Got it, okay. So mm -hmm. you and I are speaking on, uh, what is it? I think it's June 11th, uh, 2020 here. As, mm -hmm. as you look ahead to the rest of 2020, and I know it's difficult to forecast just based on everything going on in the world right now, but, but in terms of internally, your business priorities, what do you see as your priorities for the business as well as for you leading the company for the rest of this year? That's a great point. I mean, in June, 2020, where we are right now, we're in the middle or in the middle of a whole sort of global pandemic around COVID-19, mm -hmm. which has impacted the economic situation, right, around the world. So it's not just an isolated thing. However, what's exciting about this for us as well is that our solution is well positioned for companies that want to have a grasp of their network management and monitoring capabilities, which is even in this moment, even more important than it was before, because companies are now operating in more disparate ways and more distributed environments, right? Um, and have more distributed teams that you need to manage and monitor. So a lot of our clients 
are looking at different use cases like telemedicine, for example, right? And being able to not just run a hospital, but being able to interact with customers, their, their clients, their patients remotely, that requires monitoring of their network. Our clients have a lot of people working from home now, and that requires access to their Microsoft applications, their infrastructure and so forth. So the need has become even more. Um, so we see the potential for that from a product perspective to drive that, you know, to drive that evolution and transformation further in our roadmap. But let me talk and, and think about a little bit more in terms of the structure. When we think of the business and technology priorities, um, I think of it in terms of the three Ps. The first P is around people transformation. So as a team, we are now working from home permanently as a result mm -hmm. of this COVID situation. We've seen the opportunity to shift very quickly ourselves into being a remote first organizations. This is partly because our customers are also now working from home and we now see the need to be able to interact and serve our customers globally in a more uh, proactive way, in a more robust way from a business continuity perspective while we're all working remotely. So we've put that in place while establishing a strong culture as well. So people is key for us right now in terms of getting that sense of working together as a team and working with our customers together as well and providing these self-service tools, right, of engagement, not just for our people, but also for our customers. So that's a major tenet of what we need to do um, as well from a people, people pillar perspective. The second major pillar is product. As I mentioned earlier, we're looking at different use cases that our customers now have. They've been coming to us and we've been working on. So it's not just the, so I think of product in terms of usefulness and usability. So we're driving a lot of usefulness in terms of ramping up the Cloud Monix capabilities, for example, the integration that we have, not just providing uh, Azure capabilities, and, but we're also looking into more AI ops so that we have more automation to help our customers deal with these super complex environments uh, that they have. Um, our customers are also moving, driving more into reporting layers. So understanding more about the different personas that, that are using our software. So it's not just the administrators, the site re reliability engineers, but also right the executives who need to get a very good sense of the environment, given that we're now dealing in very mission critical scenarios for them to um, manage and monitor their business continuity in a very distributed environment. So we're finding that those conversations are driving us towards usability as well. So it's not just usefulness of the product in terms of different features and feeds and speeds and capabilities, um, but also in terms of how the product's used. And this is something that we are certainly thinking about in terms of more self-service capabilities, more automation to drive um, the ability for MSPs, CSPs, our end customers uh, to be able to consume the product at different levels, not just at the administrator level, but also at the executive level. And the third major P around this is presence. As I mentioned earlier at the start of this interview, we've been sort of like ninjas of the world, you know, secret um, solutions for the ones who really can afford us at a very high end side of house. We're going to break the, the walls around that and we're taking it down. When the Cloud Monix uh, acquisition is certainly a step in that direction where we are approaching more of these small mid market you know, companies as well as they grow. But beyond that, we're actually talking more about what we're doing and sharing more about the impact we've been making um, with the industry so that we can share some of our special insights. You know, as I mentioned, we have a lot, we've been sitting on all the data. We know a lot about network management monitoring. We've been keeping it as a secret sauce to ourselves. And that key part of that presence and that engagement is something that we'd like to do more of. So you'll see more of us talking about some of our thought leadership around this area so that we can sort of break the barriers of communication and help the industry evolve as a whole together. So those three Ps in terms of people, product, and presence are our business and technology priorities for the rest of the year. Well, it sounds like you're going to be busy and I look forward to covering. Jasmine, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak with me today. Thanks so much. Absolutely, Joe. It's been an honor. Thank you.